Hey, what's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome to D. Smith. Let's discuss this. Man, some of these stories you can't not make up. This guy right here involved in two major incidents within hours of each other. Why? Because he is having a manic episode. Mental health is real. Please seek help. Let's discuss. I'm gonna pay the bill. Um, I already did my own, uh, 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 what's it called? Um, transaction, I forgot the name of it. I've been having cash out for him, a rush card for the longest so. He said the rush card. The rush car was in the 90s. And the people that's doing the interview continue on with their interview, man. You got you got pit two two and two together, man. Stop playing. Uh bank account is something that I appreciate, especially for Wells Fargo, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate all that shit. So um but they even they're a struggling bank, I heard. I'm like, damn Wells Fargo, like heard you get a illegal, illegal um accounts and stuff like but I don't, it gotta be like some computer stuff but i think somebody put some uh some type of some type of world into it so my thing is i want to tell um first of all i start to tell what happened because i this is making me a snitch i feel like you know what I'm saying even though i'm not snitching on nobody wrong it's somebody bad what you so. saw happen on the street we're, we're everybody. all right <laughs> india i'm sorry i apologize i'm my bipolar let me tell y'all that and i'm all he tells them i'm bipolar Put the microphone down, pack your bags, and leave. Vacation for like two weeks. But Grady gonna give it to me. Um, so I'm leaving out the thing. Hold up, hold up, hold up. He said he has not been on, he says no medication for two weeks. And you know I'm not snitching on nobody wrong. It's somebody bad. What you so. saw happen on the street. We're forgotten everybody. All right, <laughs> India, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm, I'm bipolar, let me tell y'all that. And I'm off on medication for like two weeks. But Grady gonna give it to me. Um. So I'm leaving out the thing. So I see the uh the shooter, you know what I'm saying? I guess the shooter like to me he a nigga because I'm 6'5, 285. So uh this the first guy on the scene right here with the curly hair with the waves. He the one stopped me from beating nigga because he was talking crazy to this girl. I like he got like fucked up because in my mental health ways, uh because I've been off my depicote uh thousand milligrams, I've been off that shit like two weeks. So my thing clearly saying he has not taken his medication for two weeks. Go look at Depico. He's in a manic episode right now. He's gonna tell tell the reporters this. I mean, I'm in a manic episode. That's what it's called. Where you're almost about to get in trouble because you're doing so extreme and erratic. We need some type of pill or a, a, a drink or something that we can make from the drug people that can them shot me real quick to get back regular. So right now I'm in an extreme mode, and it's like when I seen him, I was in extreme mode. So I was already in this for two weeks. So it's like he two weeks in, he about to get stabbed. I got knives, I got all this shit on me, you know what I'm saying? Like I protect myself, I can't get a gun, you know what I'm saying? So my thing is protect yourself like you're in chain gang. I did it prison time and all that shit. So when I see- So think about that. In a minute episode, when you see danger, he's running to it. The average citizen is gonna run, run away. But during this episode, he's running to the danger to try to help uh, individuals. Let's help this real, man. They're talking to this girl, but I, I like the girl, so think you're not about to talk crazy to this girl. So when I walked over, that cop came up, you know what I'm saying? And that's when he ran off and he tried to, I guess he pulled, I don't know if he could pull his gun or what he did, but I was scared because I, I got a gun, but I can't have one. Probation officer Renee Smith, DeKalb County. <laughs> I apologize for talking to the police, but yeah, I, I didn't, my girl went to see me today. She came for Detroit, man. Her birthday was yesterday, so. So you saw, you saw who you think the shooter was. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, the dude was talking crazy. And then the cop talked to him and he ran. That's when the whole shooting shit happened. So at that time, I'm trying to worry, I'm worry about my girl really coming from the, from the airport. But uh, this girl right here runs off. She's scared. So I don't know if she actually got shot. Who all got shot? I know at that point, I, I didn't have no gun. So I can't just think, go kill you right quick. Now, if you're close enough, I can grab your neck and, and rip your throat. You know, I mean, military training. Uh, Did you hear what he just said? You have a gun. Forget that gun. If you're close, I'm gonna grab the gun and kill you with your own weapon. That's, that's what he just said. RTC. No, hell no. I have military training. I, the girl that was there, me and her walked her off. So when I did that, 
we was we was good in, in this little area. So that's when uh, they all swarmed him and, shit, and he stepped running. And after we started hearing gunshots, so that, at that time we got behind the damn side of this. I'm sorry, I made a crack. It was side of this um as well Fargo thing. So. So you ran and hit. At that, at that time, because if I also heard shooting, I don't have a gun, dog. You can be one on one without no gun, I can kill you. How many but so this is gonna come back for the second incident. He was involved with. Pay attention. Who was it? Um. At first, it was just two, because I could tell it's automatic. You know what I'm saying? The way he hit it the first time, like, oh, what the? F it didn't, it didn't sound real. So that third and fourth one, you know what I'm saying? Wherever that went, you know what I'm saying? It just. At that point, we just make sure he ain't come around the corner because I'm going to be the first one to get shot. Because I'm like, I'm bigger than this dude. I already seen him. If he got a little pistol, they ain't talking about shit. You know, I take that from him. You know what I'm saying? But just, I want Andre Dickens to give me like a little pistol. I'm going to take that from him. Pay pay attention. Pay attention because this where the second incident, he basically did what he said. 100,000 and clear my record. I got nine felonies on my probation right now. Like, what is your, what was your name? Joseph Greer, Joseph Eric Greer, one one six six nine two four, Georgia Department. Damn, T.I., nine felonies? Gracious. And tell me, where are you going when this happened? Oh, right here in the Wells Fargo, in front of Wells Fargo. The best bank in Atlanta gave me a chance and all the banks said no, Wells Fargo. Thank I'm you. I'm gonna get an RA, I'm gonna get an RA too. Can you spell your name for us? G-R-I-R. Like, like Pam Greer or David Allen Greer. Uh, they might be my family, but my mom white, my dad black, she's Polish. In Ukraine, my dad. <laughs> So listen to this news report that explained the situation that uh the the two incidents together so they they combine both of the incidents a terrifying scene unfolding during rush hour in atlanta tuesday person shooting on the bus as 39 year old joseph greer hijacked a gwinnett county after the interview greer hijacked a bus Two hours later, one hour later, man. Transit bus with 17 passengers on board. I think there's someone taking the bus hostage. Police say it all started with a fight between Greer and a fellow passenger. That passenger pulled out a gun, then Greer grabbed it and shot the passenger before the bus. Didn't Greer just say that? A small gun, I'm going to grab it and take it from you. He just said that. Mental health is real, man. Check on your people. Driver to flee the scene, authorities say. Right now I'm in an extreme mode. And it's like Earlier that day, mode. Greer spoke to NBC's WXIA at the scene of an unrelated shooting in downtown Atlanta, telling our affiliate he was bipolar and manic. My thing is, I'm in a manic episode. Hours later is when police say oh Greer God. hijacked the bus. Johnny Gilbert says his wife was a passenger as it all unfolded. She called me uh, and told me that a guy, one guy shot another guy on the bus. Police say Greer fatally shot that passenger with the passenger's own gun. Tonight, the victim... I he pulled out a gun. Greer said, that small gun ain't gonna do nothing. I'm gonna take it from you. He just said it. Wow. Identified as 58-year-old Ernest Bird Jr. The entire hijacking lasted nearly 40 minutes. The bus seen driving in the wrong direction of traffic and hitting multiple cars before a Georgia state trooper was finally able to stop the bus by shooting his gun into the engine. It was something that we'll never forget. Tonight, authorities confirming the suspect is a convicted felon. He now faces 31 charges, including kidnapping and murder. That's that's nuts, right? 31 charges, kidnapping and murder. But two hours earlier, he just said, I'm in a manic episode. Can he get off? Can he be charged? Clearly, the evidence is, is, is the evidence it's out there for the whole world to see. So I thought this comment was uh, interesting. Imagine being bipolar in a manic state, expressing that you need help because you don't have access to medication. Witness four people getting shot in altercation you just was involved with to help a young lady. 
Then an hour later, somebody pulls a gun out on you. You take the gun, shoot the guy, while all in a manic state. Bad situation. Bad situation for everyone involved, man. Crazy story right here.